Exciting day today. We actually had uh, a couple freshmen join us today. A lot of the guys that uh, that you know about all, already, and also had a, another player, Josh Allen, join us who signed his FAA. So, uh, Josh is a unique story that we were recruiting pretty hard a year ago. Um, we committed to North Carolina early on. Um, things didn't work out in that world, so we stayed. Uh, Coach Pittman did a nice job of staying aboard on him. Um, didn't know what was going to happen. We brought him in a couple weeks ago, and. Uh, Cleared up everything, and he's a nice uh, interior player. Probably play either center or guard for us. Uh, actually, was recruited by several D1 schools a year ago as a defensive tackle. Uh, we dabbled around in that, but right now we'll start him off uh, as an interior offensive lineman. So, uh, him, in addition to the guys you already know, Ty, Will, Zach, uh, Datrion, uh, they all started reporting this week, and and uh, we'll we'll join um, Jeremiah Ledbetter, also another player that uh, joined us. We only signed one junior college player this year. I just think. I would much rather probably go in the younger, more developed uh, uh, student athlete that's a qualifier earlier uh, out of high school and try to get him on campus here and work with him a little bit longer rather than trying to go after an older player with a shorter um, career opportunity. You know, just um, in retrospect, one of the things I always do, I'm my, my own worst critic, I, I look back at, uh, you know, my first year's class and what we did and who we signed, especially junior college player wise, and how many of them actually panned out for us. Uh, obviously, Marshall Spade, I would take. 100 times over, really knew that the first day I met him, first time I shook his hand, but uh, I think done a nice job of that. Uh, I haven't talked to you since the bowl game, obviously, to get out of that bowl game, to uh, fly home the day after. We haven't really been on the road recruiting, but have been on the phones a lot. Uh, had a tremendous uh, uh, amount of positive reaction, not just from the players, but from high school coaches, parents, um, so many people reaching out to us through the you know social media, uh, a lot of positive feedback, especially kind of as the as the bowl season played out and the SEC West took a couple hits, you know, it was kind of nice to uh, be a team that they could talk about positively. So that's very, very uh, uh, positive. Um, uh, we had a couple guys have uh, uh, some minor procedures, nobody that should be uh, greatly affected for us in spring ball. Um, only guy that, uh, unfortunately, Mitch Lave, and I think I told you this during the game, you know, Mitch had a shoulder that was giving him some issues, so he had surgery today. He will not be with us during spring ball, um, but everybody else should be back with us full swing. So. Uh, won't be any setbacks there. And then uh, really just within our staff, obviously, the departure of Randy Shannon. Randy uh, took an opportunity at Florida. Um, you know, Randy's got a great reputation in the state, uh, of Florida especially as a, uh, a recruiter and um, longstanding history as the football head football coach in Miami. So uh, enjoyed our two years with him. Uh, a lot of fun to be around and, and a really, really good guy. But he had an opportunity to take what he felt was a better opportunity with Florida and the other division. And uh, in a path to his career and success. So wish him all the best. We're going to actually start today. I have a guy coming in today that uh, will start our interview process. I got a list of probably, um, you know, 15 guys uh, that I, I've narrowed it down to. It was, it, was, it was much bigger than that. And then met with Rob and Clay and Rory a little bit earlier today, kind of pared it down a little bit more. Uh, we'll talk to a couple guys at the convention. Maybe we'll have somebody in place in the next two weeks. As as you guys know, I'm not a big guy to rush into things. Um it's easy to take an easy answer. I could have easily plugged somebody in there that I know or Rob's known or Clay or Rory that could have just plugged, plugged it in, but I want to really find a dynamic fit for what our defense needs. Um, you know, Rob's coached both linebackers and uh, DBs, so uh, we'll look for the best, uh, best fit for that in, in that regards. Um, uh, with that, I'll, I'll just uh, open up for questions. Yeah, absolutely. A great question. They, um, we, uh, um, the driving force for us being in Florida is, is me. Um, I, I, um, I don't mean that me doing the work. I just mean why we went down there. I, I was a young coach uh, at the University of Iowa. I began to play teams that had tremendous success overnight, and a lot of them were from South Florida-driven players. Uh, first, were, first one I really noticed was Iowa State when they had the Davis brothers, um, uh, then Michigan State, Illinois, um, uh, some teams really went literally from the outhouse to the penthouse overnight, and a lot of them were South Florida player-driven. So I went with Coach to Coach Fry. I laid out a two-year uh, window of recruits that had signed uh, with uh, with conference schools in the Big Ten when I was at earlier, as well as the Big 12, and showed what those schools had begun to do. That's when we went down there. Um, my first year down there, I believe we signed five kids. Three of them played in the NFL. Uh, all five were great players. So it really opened my eyes to the player that's down there. Um, uh, last year, uh, even though Randy was, uh, um, um, you know, Charlie did 
the legwork on, on multiple players that are here now. Randy was in really just in Miami. And then I actually had him in Atlanta uh, in New Orleans his first year. And then when the departure of Charlie, I put him strictly in Florida, put Rob on the west side. Um, so now Clay and myself and Rob will take over uh, the area that Randy just vacated. And then uh, depending on who I hire will be uh, someone or I transition someone into South Florida next year. It, well, obviously not taking any, I don't mean to take anything from Charlie or, or obviously he's down there now. Um, and Randy, they were a very, very big part of it. But um, I, I think we constantly preach in the recruiting process, sell the University of Arkansas. You know, we're not – I make this correction all the time. You'll get in a staff meeting and somebody will say, oh, this is my linebacker, this is my DB, or this is – when he's talking about his recruiting area. And it's a very common thing. And I'll just say, whoa, 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 the University of Arkansas is linebacker. Because when he comes here, he plays for Arkansas. He doesn't play for – uh, this coach. Um, I don't think if you've ever recruited in the area of South Florida, you would realize how easily that uh, transition can happen. Yeah, Roe uh, had a great conversation with uh, Roe shortly after his uh, uh, completion of the, the fall semester. Had a great conversation with his father um, uh, after things were said and done and, and, and began to proceed forward. Uh, I got an unbelievable. Um, uh, comment from his dad that I think will will give light to what I think he can accomplish here in the next year. Um, uh, he comes back and does what I think he's capable of doing. It'll probably be one of the greatest lessons he's ever learned in his life. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we start classes, absolutely. Uh, the kids will come in over the next week and uh, he'll hit the ground running full go. He's full clear academically, um, uh, fulfilled all the obligations that I've asked him to do and, and he'll be ready to roll. Yeah, um, yeah I met with Darius. Uh, uh, whatever day was, the third, I think it was. Um, um, went over to Mobile, met with uh, his dad, um, uh, his uncle. Um, um, and, and I think everything's very positive. We've given him a lot of information. I've uh, been able to let him process through that. And Darius kind of goes things at his own pace. Uh, so uh, I do expect him to give us some some news, uh, you know, some some point this week. And obviously the deadline's the 15th. And, uh, um you know, it's been very, very positive. I talked to his aunt, uncle and his dad again yesterday and Darius. Darius went to the Go Daddy Bowl last night, so I think he's uh, in Mobile enjoying himself. Um, but, um, you know, the thing is about Darius, he's got an incredible future in front of him. Uh, when he's going to take advantage of that opportunity is, uh, for the NFL is, is, uh, is going to be in his hands. Do you think it's going to be him making the I do, but if I do tell you that, then I could be right or I could be wrong. Uh, so... Huge. You know, I, I think three things. First, uh, going into the game, you know, just in the state of Texas, before we were preparing, you know, I was in Dallas, I was in Houston, I was in East Texas, and the, just kind of the, you know, you might have a Texas guy in the coach's office, you might have an A and M guy, you might have an Arkansas guy, and everybody kind of spewing their own thoughts and philosophies into uh, to take a knee three times inside the five yard line because you want to. Um, uh, makes a big statement, I think, uh, about where you're at and what you want to do and how you want to play the game. So that that part helped us out tremendously. And then I think after the game, the third segment is just just the results of, of even guys that I know are, 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 are Longhorn guys and guys that uh, you know didn't want to see the results of that game be the way. Just the respect that uh, I think Arkansas gained, the way we play the game, uh, the way we went about it. Um, I'll put my hand on a uh, Bible and take every polygraph test there is known to man. I, I, I did not do anything um, uh, with my hand during that uh, handshake. And, and that really probably disturbed me more than anything because that's really not who I am, what I am. Um, uh, and, and I think that, that, that game solidified it probably more than anything. When you look at the results from the West, I mean, it looks to me like next year might be completely wide open. Very you know, Tom, I appreciate what you're saying. We got a lot of players back. Um, you know, offensively, we lose Bray Cook, obviously, Demetrius Wilson and A.J. Derby. Um, you know, one significant starter for the entire time, you know, and A.J. did his own uh, up until the last couple of games, and Demetrius kind of in and out of that lineup. Uh, defensively, it's very hard to replace the production of, of a Marshall Spade, Trey Flowers, and, and Alan Turner, but I do think we have guys sitting in those roles who will be ready to do it. I think with the continued growth of our program, uh, offense, defense, special teams, winter program, spring program, Fall uh, fall camp will be a very very good football team. Well, 
Well, it, I, I think uh, a couple things. You know, you just said it. There's nothing that replaces experience. Uh, there's, um, I don't care what you do or how you say it, to go through some things, you know, you could be the greatest player in the world, but to, to live through some things is, is it truly a benefit, um, good or bad. Uh, obviously, he's had a share of both. Um, I think that, that ratio 20 to 15 is a pretty impressive stat. That would be getting blown uh, all over the country, you know, when we were, if we were playing a game this weekend just because he had he had done so many really good things. And then the, uh, the better part of it, you know, I think that um, uh, the confidence of the people around him, players and coaches, is just going to continue to grow. So that's a that's a very, very positive thing to have two 2,000-yard rushing backs, uh, two uh, running backs uh, before the game was ever played to be coming back. Um, a very, very solid group of interior offensive linemen uh, that uh, return. It's going to be a good year for the Razorbacks. Cody, it looked to like you didn't mix up your big and the offensive line, and they were actually talking about it on the broadcast about uh, Kirkland moving to right tackle. Mm -hmm. No, well, you know, we'll uh, we'll sit down and assess exactly, you know, uh, where we're at when we come back. But I think the uh, opportunity for Denver to play tackle would only benefit him. Um, you know, n not just us as a program, but he's probably one of the better uh, pass pro athletes I've ever been around. He's got incredible feet. Um, uh, for for him, uh, and I know he's not thinking wired like this, but you know, tackles make more money than guards uh, in the NFL, and and uh, that's a very real thing. Um, if we're better suited to uh, you know, move Frank Ragnow out to a guard spot where he didn't have to worry about snapping that ball. And Mitch Smothers had a really nice year, and now you bring in some of these underclassmen. Uh, they're going to be with us now. You know, we got three O linemen. They're going to be with us in spring ball. I mean, that's that's worth its weight in gold. Josh Allen and, and uh, um, Zach Rogers, and the possibility of another guy. So those are those are really really big things to be helping them for our program. Yeah, I think uh, first you had to capitalize on when it was here. So um, I, I, I reached out to our seniors when we were in our final bye week. I said, hey, uh, we have a three-week season. If we do what we're capable of doing, we're going to get one more game. But uh, please, in these next three weeks, uh, pass on the legacy that you that you know you do, you should. Um, you know, it's accountability. It's the way they prepare. It's the way they play. Uh, Trey took it to a whole nother level and met with all those freshmen as, as, as two, two, three days before the game about – uh, you represent your family and your name and who you are, twenty four seven. So, uh, we got a lot of young guys and I need to get on track. But the good news is they had some great mentors, and um, that's going to be a huge thing for us to be a step, you know, here in the next couple of months. How big a shot for Williams to have the varsity back? Really big. I, it, you know, I think Jay Will made a great decision for himself. Um, uh, a guy that's gone every, grown every year. He's going to get bigger. He's going to get faster. He's going to get stronger. Um, he'll know our offense uh, a little bit better. Uh, we may be able to use him, utilize him in, in some ways that we haven't in the past. You know, um, you know, for instance, like Alex to throw him back there returning kicks at the end of the year. It's a very positive thing for him, and it's a positive step for Arkansas. It's just we haven't ever been able to put that on his plate till late. You know, so I'm sure we'll find a couple niches for Jay Will too. You know, I, I give a lot of credit to Jeff Long. Uh, I'm a much, I'm, I'm a big believer in proactive. Uh, conversations and reactive conversations. Um, uh, I knew as we have success uh, overall in our program that people are going to come after our guys. Um, someone asked me the other day, Coach, you ever sit, you know, you worried about your guys leaving? Well, I, I worry every night, you know, and it's because we got great people. Um, if we didn't have great people, um, the opposite happens. Now you see coaches getting fired left and right. You know, we got conferences, uh, schools in our conference that have lost multiple players or multiple coaches off their staff by their own choice, you know, and um, you know, if you're at a place where they fire one coach and two more get fired to bring in another guy, that's not a great environment to work in. Uh, you know, so I, I think the part that we have here is stability. The coaches we have lost. I didn't agree with Chris going to Ohio State, but he obviously made a decision what he's doing. So that was his own accord. Charlie took the FAU, and, and uh, um, you know, I think the part that was uh, good for us is these guys have moved on and have had success. And uh, Jeff has been unbelievable. We took care of every one of our assistants that, that I expressed an interest to do so. Um, and and uh, every one of those guys has stayed in put. Now, I can't tell you what's happening out there beyond what I know, you know, but uh, uh, it should be an interesting couple of weeks. Uh, oh, you mean for me? 
I'm going to tell you this. Now, I mean this with all sincerity, and, and, and um, um, I, anytime I have a chance to transition, I think I should make it a better decision, you know. Um, I gladly would have kept Chris and, and stayed with where it is. Um, obviously, I thought Rob was a, a, an op, op, excellent opportunity for me to hire, but if I don't get better as a head coach with every chance I get a chance to make a move, what am I – uh, what message am I relaying when we're in recruiting? You know, I always tell kids, hey, you can go ahead and be comfortable. There's going to be a better one coming right behind you, and that's how you keep getting better. Um, and, and that's exactly how it will work. You know, we'll bring in a better linebacker coach or, or better fit for our defense, and, and there's no doubt in my mind with this next hire. I mean, that's what it is. Well, uh, I think Rob and, uh, and, and here, here's what, what, what I think we have to really keep in play. The, the area that we improved the most was in tackling, all right? And tackling wasn't just linebackers tackling well, DBs tackling well. It was the collective group overall. And that comes from individual time. And, I, you know, I made a transition with the DBs. We made a transition within the linebacker group. When we made a transition in the defensive line. And collectively, they all got better. Um, because I think they're all on the same page. So to, to stay another year within this system, it's a system that I, I would go – I mean, if I had to go out and call a play tomorrow, I mean, I would run this exact same system and the exact same terminology. So that's, that's been the most rewarding part for me. Um, uh, and I think our players have truly benefited because of it. And all that tackling that you came from Smith last You know what? It was a, a tackling philosophy that he has, but um, I think each one of the coaches added a little bit of their nuance to it. Um, you know, I, I, I saw some things that, that I've never seen before out of Clay in the back end on, on angle tackles and, and, and uh, support tackling. And then I think Rory up front uh, had brought some things that he had had in the NFL as well as his time uh, that he would uh, spend at other places that, that really made us a better defensive line. So it was, it was kind of the perfect storm for a lot of really good things. You know, the, the senior bowl itself is the big one, you know, and, and uh, unfortunately sometimes uh, the best decision is not to even play, um, you know, so it depends on how a kid comes out of the year, um, uh, you know, where their draft status is, whether it can help them or hurt them and all that jazz. Um, I had a young man that was uh, voted the MVP of, the, uh, of, a, of a senior bowl game. He got invited uh, to the senior bowl itself and blew out his ACL the first day of practice and went from a first rounder to a third rounder. Well, the best decision for him was exactly what I told him to do is don't play. Um, so sometimes your best advice is just in that department. But we got out of there. I talked to Trey just yesterday just because of, of what he's doing. I've talked to Martrell a couple times um, uh, because of where he's at. And then A.J. was, a, was an alternate for that position. So uh, those two guys I think will represent us well. Yeah, I think it would be, be beneficial for us, and the path I'm going down first is to find uh, a great linebacker coach that can fit in our system that uh, could recruit the state of Florida. That would be my ideal if I could pinpoint it, you know. But um, Florida is kind of the wild, wild west, you know. Um, uh, I've recruited in Jersey and, and the East Coast, and if you aren't from there, they kind of look at you a little different, you know. Uh, I've recruited in Texas and, and, and had success, but if you're not from Texas or you don't have a certain draw, they kind of look at you a little dodd too. Um, um, you go down to Florida, it's a little bit of a melting pot, you know, and you can go in there as long as you're going to work, as long as you got personality, as long as you uh, have a little substance to you and you say what you're going to do is exactly what happens, you can have success down there. I went down there. I'd never been to Florida in my life, you know, and uh, immediately had success, and I'd, I just did what we asked you to do. Um, so that the recruit to the state of Florida is a little bit different. Now, you get better at it in more time, but it's not a very difficult spot to – to go down there, there's so many of them down there. Um, uh, it's not an overly tasking environment. And with that, though, you've had success with some of those Florida guys, so you've bumped it up. How much is that? Huge. Right now? Huge. 100%. We, we, um, you know, we make up mailings all the time, social media. Uh, join, join. I believe, if, unless something dramatically changes after this year's signing class again, as we have for the last two years, we will have more Floridians on our roster than any other SEC school besides Florida itself. Um, which uh, is, is amazing because when I got here, we had one or two, um, you know. So, uh, to, again, to have the kids come in and have success, uh, I would say the biggest surprise to me by far have been Florida and Louisiana. Um, I knew Texas was good. I knew Arkansas, Oklahoma. Uh, but Louisiana and Florida have been the biggest surprises to me. Um, a, a little bit. 
But you know, I, you know, I got like I said, you know, fourteen guys, fifteen guys on my list. There's some guys that were, you know, maybe born in Florida, raised in Florida, went to school somewhere else, or kids that were born in another part of the country but went to school in Florida. Um, uh, guys that I've worked with that, you know. Uh, I remember when I when I first hired Dave Doran, he'd never been in Florida, and he was all concerned because he was and he went down there for me and did an outstanding job, and now goes down there all the time as a head coach at NC State. Uh, it's very very easy to go down there and have success um, uh, if you do things the right way. You know, uh, I would, I'll give a lot of credit to Jeff Long on this one. Um, uh, my first round of hirings. Um, we did not have an SEC no compete clause in there, and and uh, so everybody that was on my first staff has come, uh, kind of grandfathered into that. And uh, you know, after that first year, every one of my guys signs. I have an SEC no compete, so I can't go to another SEC. Not that I want to, but it just it eliminates the conversation from happening. Um, and obviously, Randy wasn't under that, you know. So um, if you look at the world of college football, the the conference is driving the highest. Uh, you know, pricing for coaching is in our conference. And, and you know, I lost a guy that uh, was the fourth highest paid on my, my, my chart uh, to, a, to a non-coordinating position, um, you know, and, and was $150,000 a year pay raise, you know. So, I mean, uh, it, it, I didn't want to go there. And I told Jeff, no, don't worry about it. We're, we're going forward. We'll find a, a better situation, a better solution. So um, it's really been fun for me. As head coach, you've got to kind of always look out for your own, even though you're – you always it's it's one of those double edged swords. You you want to look out for your coaches, but you also want to look out for your university. You want to look out for yourself. Um, uh, but if you hire the right people and the right, I got coaches right now just like myself. We've turned down money to stay where we want to be, and and that's the kind of people you want to employ. If you're looking for the guy with the next big buck, uh, it's not going to last very long. You know, bowl games, I think, gets down to so much uh, of what is done before the game to lead up to the day when it happens, you know. And I look at us. I had never done a preparation like that. I had never been to a bowl game for less than seven days. So, I mean, I am like uh, – I can't tell you how many schedules I made, um, you know, and, and went back and forth. Do we arrive four days out, three days out? Do we go to practice? So then we go down there, and we got a curveball where we do – we have to adjust our practices two days in a row, which absolutely goes against every sensory in my body. Uh, but I knew we had to do it. Here's a critical moment. This is kind of funny. All right, so it's a, um, a Friday walkthrough for us, which is Sunday, right? So it's the day before the game. We never do anything on Fridays. I mean, we do a light walkthrough, don't do much. And the day before, we usually do a pretty intense practice for a Thursday, but it's condensed and it's very high intensity. We didn't get to do that because we didn't have any um, – the Texas Bowl doesn't have any uh, indoor facilities because the Texans were playing. So it's just driving me nuts. So I'm watching practice, and we haven't ran for 48 hours. And then I start counting back. Well, it's actually been 48 hours and 16 hours because we didn't do it until 8 o'clock the day before we left, and I'm going through all this stuff. So finally in my head, I just say, hey, we're going to do this. Uh, so we go in the I get done with the offense was in the gym. Defense is in the auditorium. I said, everybody go put on your shorts, uh, you know, put on your cleats. And we're going to go out and we're going to run some, some striders. We're going to break a sweat and get going. Not one kid, not one kid said a word, looked at me, said anything, except for did a U-turn, went in the locker room, put their cleats on. And I said to myself at the time, and I grabbed my coaches, I said, I didn't have one kid. Usually you're going to have some kid go, dang, you know, you know I don't want to go do that. I don't do that. Not one kid. We went out there. We hit 10 striders. We were out there for 15 minutes. Kids got into it. They're laughing. And we didn't, you know, the next day we didn't break stride. And I think that as much as we had to do with great X's and O's and whatever, I think the frame of mind the day before the game was set on what we were going to do. We weren't playing outside. We weren't going to play in that jazz. But I thought we needed – they couldn't run, you know, and as much as I love basketball, and I know we got 40 minutes of fury or whatever we are here uh, going up and down. The, the, you can't run 100 yards, you know. You can't open it up and throttle it. Um, and and it's, that's what football is, and, and that's why we kind of did it. And – uh, I think that may have had as, as big a thing to do with us as anything else. Yeah, we ran the rain, sleet. I wouldn't say I ran. I jogged uh, uh, sl slightly. Um, but uh, our coaches were out there, and it was, it was awesome. I mean, I mean, I can't say 110 players loved it. I bet you 100 of them did. And the other 10 knew better than to say a thing. Um, 
And that's kind of what we got going now. We got enough good guys going in the right direction. If somebody wants to wander, if somebody wants to make a bad decision and I remove them from the team, that's where they know they'll be. Um, and that really works out well. Um, well, my Marshall Spade, uh, I don't. I would say this: my defensive leader is, 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 is and I hope it will be Darius Philon. I think he's a kid that uh, really grew a lot this year and can put himself in the right position if he comes back. He's that guy. I think in the back end, um, you would like a guy like Rohan to take this experience as a positive one and, and jump himself forward into doing something really good. But these young guys, I mean, um, uh, D, uh, DJ Dean. Um, Jerry Collins, he don't say boo, but they really just work and don't do anything but ask, do exactly what you ask them to do, um, and, and uh, uh, that's that's huge. I think that the Mike linebacker Brooks Ellis has has really developed some leadership skills. It's going to be fun, and I think for him to be next to Martrell this year and see how he grew was a big big deal. Um, and then up front, I said Darius, but also I think another guy that really uh, could come on for us is Jamichael Winston. I, I, I think Mike's got leadership capabilities that. Uh, could come out of nowhere and, and do some really good things. Um, Martrell was such a quiet kid. I mean, he really – I know on game day you see him be a little bit theatric and, and boisterous. He don't say nothing during the week. I mean, he his was all about, uh, uh, you know, what he did on game day. Now, he said – I think I told you guys after the game, the night before the game, uh, we had a players meeting that uh, I gave the seniors an opportunity to talk, and it was in my 20 years of coaching the, the best thing I've ever witnessed in my life. And I think um, – our players felt that, and it's going to go beyond uh, just that game. I think it's something that they'll learn for a long, long time. Yeah. Without a doubt, I think you're Mike linebacker. He's your field general. You know, he's always the guy that uh, you know if they have their troops aligned a certain way, we're going to move our troops a certain way. You know, as coaches, we stand over there on the sideline and we hope he makes the right decision and we coach him the right way. But uh, until they move their people, and we got to move our people. Um, you know, what I do think Rob and the defensive staff do a tremendous job of is they funneled a lot of plays to guys. Um, you know, set an edge here, make this guy make the play. And, um, you know, we're so very, very, very um, schooled in what we're, what was happening before the play ever happened. Uh, when you play a team like Texas that can, can give you some pre-snap indicators, that's a, that's a really nice, nice feature. Sam Irwin Hill, um, you know, it, as you probably noticed, we didn't we didn't rugby him one time. Um, I talked about it every week because I want people to keep preparing it. But um, we lined up and we punted conventional punt every snap of the entire year, so there was no um, like the year before we punted him right, we punted him left, we rugby punted, we pro punted. We didn't do one snap of that the entire year, but the element was there. You know, you know what I mean, Nate. I mean, he he could do it. Um, I tell the ref. Before the game, watch out, this guy can punt with his right and his left. Well, hell, I knew he wasn't going to punt with his left, uh, but I made that ref be on his toes, you know. Um, uh, I think that that element was there. And then, the, you know, the fake thing, um, those are just things that people give you. Uh, we don't ever really call a fake with the idea that Sam was going to juke anybody, uh, you know, or make somebody miss. We just did it with the idea that it was going to have success. Jerry Collins? Yeah. You know, and sometimes I say Jerry Cornelius when I say Jerry Collins. I wish uh, if I could separate those two, but I realize they're on offense, defense. Jerry Collins, um, uh, probably next to Martrell, as far as a guy that's returning, had the single biggest improvement from a year ago to where we are today. Um, you know, I think Tevin Mitchell, Martrell, Jared, uh, and, and uh, um, uh, Martrell were the most improved defensive players. So Jared obviously is the only one that's coming back out of the group, and I think he's only going to uh, be a junior. You know, he's a, close to a four-point student athlete, uh, just does everything right. Uh, we had him investigate a few tapeworms to make sure there wasn't anything going on there because he does eat. Like, I'm always going by him and I go, go, go again. You know, go, to, go up there again, go up there again. Uh, he eats a lot. He just burns it off. He's got one of those uh, unusual um, uh, bodies that doesn't put on weight very easily. Rob Smith, he has signed a new contract, yep. Um, for myself or him? Um, I think Rob is very happy. Um, 
I, I, I can tell you this. He and I enjoy working together very, very much. Uh, Jeff was very kind to give us a, a, a package that uh, allows him to get a significant bump. I'm going to release all that stuff together here uh, when it's all finalized on, on new contracts. But um, I, I can't, you know, dictate what, what someone can or cannot do. There are certain things that prevent him from making lateral moves, I, I think, without, you know, f- severe financial consequences. Um, but Rob's a very good coach. The, the good news in, in – is Rob is in his first year here. We're all very excited about him. You all, very the fans are excited about him. Um, it, it, it's amazing to me when I watch the world of college football move and guys that maybe haven't done as well continue to get really good jobs uh, just based on past accomplishments. So when Rob starts to accomplish, we've won two SEC games. You know, I mean, that's what we've done. Uh, so uh, until we do that, uh, I, I totally understand the reservation and, and why people don't necessarily know what we've done yet. Who's that, Rob? Rob, you had a two years ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We jumped him up a little bit. Um, you know, he was uh, a guy that I, I was very excited to get uh, for the you know, for the for the price that I was, but I knew very early on. I, I think I approached Jeff uh, during the uh, second uh, uh, after the first bye week, I knew it was even before we played LSU, I could just see what was coming. I knew what was happening and uh, Jeff was very, very proactive and, and uh, got us to the point where we are and, and you know that's just Contracts are new now. I don't know how much you all knew about this, but they never had assistant coaches contracts before I came here. You know, so that's like that's like unheard of. I mean, uh, I've had an assistant coaches contract uh, for 15 years. So uh, f- for Scott Verde, uh, for uh, um, uh, Chancellor Gerhardt, and all the administration, I mean, it, it, this is a that was a lot of uh, red tape and some things we had to get through that were very normal in the rest of the world of college football. So uh, a very very Appreciative thank you to everybody that made that happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, you know, again, I think it, uh, it comes down to one element. We were tackling very well, but our kids communicated. You know that little hog and ease that everybody laughed about? Um, you know, if that was a book, it would be a bestseller. Um, it's a broad-based question, but uh, I, I'm probably more excited now to be the head coach at Arkansas than I've ever been. You've heard me say that now several times because it keeps getting better. I mean, it got really bad there for a while. So uh, as as you move forward, I think that part is really really neat to to, to know that you're getting in on recruits that are that are out of these other places. Um, you're you're talking with high school coaches that believe that you're going to be better than those other places. Um, uh, you you get opportunities that are afforded to you that. Uh, maybe haven't been there before because of because of what you've done, but more importantly, how, why you've done it or how you've done it. Um, uh, I think there's a lot to uh, be said for you know just staying true to what you know is is really what you want, to not compromise, to not waver, um, to not flinch, um, and give in to something or somebody that you you know you shouldn't just to try and get a, a quicker fix. You know, and uh, our kids. I had a lot of reservation when I started throwing off some guys for this bowl game. I'm like, man, this guy's he's at the same position. This guy's this. This guy's this. But I knew I needed to do it. I didn't. I didn't even. Now I think a couple of my coaches were like, whoa, 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 you know. And then uh, uh, look what we did. And, and it just reaffirms that you you have a plan that you know is wood is good. You have a a faith that you know is un, unyielding. And and um, uh, good things will happen. Who's your guys transferring south? Transferring in here. Yeah. Oh, um, you know, there are guys. I, um, I, I worked with a lot of guys transferring out before the semester. Um, I don't know if they've actually landed on a home spot yet. I worked a lot with uh, all those guys. I looked. I worked with um, um, all of them, you know, from the guys that kind of left earlier in the season to the guys that left a little bit later to some guys that left after the season and, and trying to work with them as best we can. I think just like high school recruiting picked up when we have – a situation like we could be one of the better teams coming back in the SEC conference, uh, and especially in the SEC West. Uh, now you get some unique situations. The SEA, SEC approved uh, a year ago an opportunity for players with one year of eligibility to transfer in now without any um, uh, really any any backlash. You know they weren't they didn't even allow that. Like for instance, 
a player I had in my past, Russell Wilson, who you all know, we was able to transfer in without any issues. Um, when I first got here, there was a couple guys that wanted to come in, and I couldn't do that with them. Uh, and we lobbied and petitioned, and now the SEC will allow those waivers uh, and those guys that have graduated early uh, to come in and play immediately, and we've had several reach out. Do you see any changes in your offensive staff? Really? I don't. I don't see any changes in the rest of my staff, but, again, I can't control what I don't know is going on. I sure hope not. I think there's great continuity there. What's that? What got you down in the three to start? You know, put the finishing touch. Um, you know, we got a, a, anywhere from, you know, I always count the guys that I say I know are real. Um, we have a couple guys that I think are committed that feel they're committed, but until I see them, you know, 100% in. So I think we need probably about another, uh, you know, seven, eight, maybe ten guys um, uh, to pop in the boat here. We got a, a really big recruiting weekend coming up uh, on the 16th and on the 23rd. Um, I think some guys that uh, could make a huge impact on our program, but I would say that I think the meat and potatoes of what our program is is already committed to us 100%, and that's you know lies a lot within our state. Uh, just in the last week, what you found out from meeting with Jimmy Johnson? Um, you know, I haven't been. Uh, I was in Cabo for three days. There weren't a lot of Texas or Arkansas fans down there. Um, I just need to get out and, and relax a little bit. Um, but I, I, I do know just, you know, being in town here the last 36, 48 hours, um, my wife and I want to sneak out and get get uh, some uh, brunch. We went into a, a Walmart for some groceries yesterday, and I, I think we took 20 pictures in 20 minutes. Um, uh, just so many people coming up to you. We didn't get past the produce aisle, and we were already paparazzi, uh, which is better than having throw food at you, I guess. Um, but uh, it means a lot to a lot of people. Um, you know, people down there at the bowl game. When I when we got off that bus and walked through that gauntlet and and uh, I knew we were going to win that game. I mean, I wasn't going around, you know, Joe Namath and anybody predicting it and, and, and everything, but I, I knew we were going to have success. So by the by that frenzy and what I knew might transpire after that, um, it's a really fun time. And then look at, like, I mean, Mike and what he's doing with basketball, uh, what, what Jimmy's doing with – take the number five team to the wire last night and women's basketball and what soccer and uh, track and, and it's just really a fun time I would think in Arkansas history right now to be a part of what's going on.